In this video, we're going to take a look at the record tab within sample one XT. So if I just click on that, we can see we're presented with that view and the record tab is where we can set everything up to record live audio directly into sample one. We can record in two different ways. The first being simply to just click the record button here and we begin recording straight away and nonstop by using the record button. The other method is based on amplitude or level based recording. And with this method, we can click the gate record there and record distinct audio clips automatically that are based on our gate settings here up above. And we're gonna take a closer look at that in just a moment. First, let's look at the various parameters that we have available to us to get everything right before we begin recording our audio samples live. To begin in the upper left hand corner here we have an input section and if we click on this down arrow we can choose from a variety of inputs that are available to us and this is the source of where we're going to choose to capture our live audio from. Now in order for me to capture audio for these tutorials I need to use the built in audio card on my laptop so what we're seeing here is the Realtek high definition audio, the uh, audio card and its inputs. For instance, we only have a sample one loaded into Studio One right now, so that's all that we have. And then outputs, we can capture the main output here. But just know that if I were to close this out, come to our browse, bring in a impact, and let's see how many, let's activate some more outputs here on up to eight of the stereo outs for impact, and then open up the mix. I'll close the browse out. Then I'm going to, while the stereo one is highlighted, I'm going to hold shift, select the other one there, and then add a bus for the selected channels. Double click. I'll call that drums bus. Close out the mix console. And if we return to our simple one now and the record tab, then we can see in the input, the available sources. We now have that drums bus that we added, which is has uh, stereo one through eight from impact routed to that drum bus. If we come to our instruments, we can also see those additional channels that we activated are now available to record from as well. In our uh, output down below, we still have that main that's available. So you can see there's a lot of flexibility with the sources that we can capture for our live sampling. Now next to our input section, we have our monitor controls. And with this button here, we can turn monitoring on so that we can hear the material live while it's being recorded if we'd like. And we can actually choose the source that we'd like to monitor by clicking this down arrow. We can see that we can monitor the main out or the drums bus here. Next to that here in the center, we have a time readout which will show how long our recording is going on for. Then next to that, we have gate controls, which we'll come back to in a moment. And then in the center here, we have a waveform view. So as we're recording, this is going to update in real time and show you the waveform of the audio that you're capturing while recording into sample one. And below that, we have a level meter here where we can see uh, the where the levels are at for the source material that's going in. Right now, it's capturing and showing the narration of my vocals here. And the importance of this area is going to come into play in just a moment. Now, at the bottom left corner, we have name, a field for name, and we can click here and then input a name before we begin recording so that Studio One is going to assign that name to the audio that we are recording. In the center, we have a resolution. So right now that's on 24-bit. We can choose 16-bit, 24, or 32-bit float for our sampling. To the right, we have insertion key, and this is going to be where the root note for our audio sample that we're recording is going to be placed at. So if I were to click the record button here and record a sample, it's gonna be placed on C1, its root note. So let's go ahead and record something here, um, just so we can see how all of these parameters work in action. And I'm not gonna do anything too extravagant here. The main thing I want to get across is how all of these parameters function and you can use them as creatively as you'd like once you understand what they're there for. So I'm just going to record a finger snap and so I'll click in the name field because I want that audio recording to be identified as something that I can recognize so I'll put snap. 
And just keep in mind, if we record this and then go on to record something else, it's going to assign this name to everything you record unless you change it before the beginning. And then it's going to put a number sequentially after each one. So be sure that if you would like to name each of your samples that you come here first before you do your recording. For the resolution, I'm going to leave that at 24-bit. The insertion key, C1, that's fine with me. Actually, I'm going to put that at C3 or middle C. I'll press Enter. And with any of these fields or with the insertion key, we can just click to manually input a value. We could also click hold and drag up and down. But I'm just going to click and put that C3 back in there and press Enter. So now I'm just going to press record and record a snap of my fingers. And I just press the uh, record button again to stop that. And we can see that we have snap in our samples list area. And if we take a look at the name field down below here, if we don't change this and we were to press record again, it's going to name that second one snap two, and it's going to place it on the root of C sharp three, just right above our regular one. So actually I'm going to go ahead and press record and do that one more time so we can see that in action. Okay, clicking again to stop. Then you can see we have snap, then we have snap two. If we keep going, you see it's snap three. We can see how that functions. If I click on the mapping tab, then you can see how these are placed right next to each other. And they can only be triggered by C3 for the first snap and C sharp three. Now, if I come to either end here and drag out, we can expand the playability of that first snap and do the same for the second as well. So now if I were to come down to the bottom, open up our virtual keyboard, we can see here is the root note C3 for that first snap. Okay, and so we can clear see clearly how that works. I'm just going to bring these back in. And just note, we could have also come up to the root, low, and high fields and made these adjustments as well. So the low, we could click, hold, and drag that out. And coming back to record, I'm going to come to the sample list area and right click and choose to remove all. And we'll go ahead and continue. And at this point, we're going to take a look at the second method, which is gate rec record. And this is going to allow us to enter into record mode. And based on the level of the signal coming in, sample one will create individual audio clips automatically. So the controls that we have available to determine where our audio samples are going to be split is the gate threshold control. So we have close and open. Now the open determines the signal level at which recording begins and the close determines the signal level at which recording ends. And these fields actually tie in with these brackets down below. So if I were to click, hold, and drag the open, we can see that this ad adjusts up here. We could click, hold, and drag this as well. And you can see the marker down below moves based on where we drag this. So as soon as our monitored level, you can see this, reaches above this marker, we can see that lead light up letting us know that the monitored signal is enough to actuate the recording here. Now the close, as soon as it drops below, so if I move away from the mic, we can see my signal drop. And if I move that up now, you get the idea. Once it drops below this other marker, which represents close, then the recording is going to stop. So let's just take a look at this in action to make this a little bit clear. I'm going to click the gate record. That's how we enter into this mode. And then I'm going to start snapping. You'll see the meter moving just below at the very bottom here. Then as I get closer, you'll see once we reach this marker, recording will begin. Once we drop below, it will stop. And this will all make sense in a second. So I'll go ahead and enter into gate record.
Okay, so you can see there each snap that uh, was triggered a level above this marker here went into record once the snap was finished and fell below this one, it stopped. And you can see that we now have all of these different samples in the sample list area and sample one has labeled them with the snap that we had in the name area and just placed sequential numbers after each one. And you can see if we were to record again, we'll have a snap seven placed at the bottom. Okay, so these are all of the parameters and controls that we have available to us when we're recording live into Sample 1 XT. Hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below, and I will see you in the next tutorial.